Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about what and why do we need to know about body types. And I put here my very um, good quote that I really believe in and it's my favorite and it's in I kind of use it as my motto. You get what you want if you dress for it. And I truly, truly, truly believe in, in that saying. I really think that it's correct. So today we will talk a little bit about introductions and logistics, what we will do. We will talk about components of the successful outfit, what I believe are they are. In order to make your, your every outfit successful, you need to consider all of, all, all of these components together. We will talk a lot about body proportion uh, from, and how to find your body type and why it's important and why it's not. And I explain you what I think about the common uh, body types that are widely available in, um, in Internet. You can find a lot about them, what their pros and what their cons. Uh, we will talk about additional parameters of the body that not the body type alone is not enough to properly dress yourself. And then I, I will share with you my thoughts about why we even need to bother to know all this, right? Why, why does it matter? I will also share with you what I propose you as the next steps. And then we will have um, time for questions. So who I am and why I do what I do. My name is Rada and I'm owner of uh, Style You Best. I'm personal stylist and style coach. Um, I was not always uh, a stylist. I actually have a very successful career in IT, but style and fashion was always with me. From the, my teen years, I always was involved in some kind of styling. Um, I had exposure to the fashion from my aunt that worked for the fashion house. And fashion was always around me, like in fashion magazines, in creating designs. And when I was teen, I also did my clothes by myself. Now I totally lost all the skills. But then I was sewing and also doing other stuff and, and, and creating, designing my own clothes. And it's never went away. I, I look very different from my peers at, at corporate world because... It's just part of me. It's part of my life. And therefore, I decided to do something with this. And I started my, my business as a stylist. I, of course, received professional um, education in this field um, and finished three online schools. It's never enough for me. I'm always learning. I'm always looking for more information. I'm kind of perfectionist. Um, and it's something that thrills me, that makes me feel alive. So it's also... Um, a lot, a lot of, I have a lot of passion about this. And I decided to do it also, not only as a business, but also as my mission to the world, because um, my goal is proof uh, that style is for everybody, that style helps you achieve more, helps you not to miss opportunities, that every woman, regardless of her age, budget or body shape, can be beautiful and magnificent. And style has nothing to do with your income or how expensive your clothes are. And you don't need to be celebrity to be stylish. Every woman can do this. It's simple. So that's also part of my goals and my mission that I took on myself. A little bit about what we will do today. So first of all, there will be a, a, a playback of this uh, seminar. So you will get it in your email. You can share it with your friends. I probably will put it on YouTube. So it will be totally in public access. And I uh, encourage you to look into this again. If you have, um, if you confused or don't remember what I said, go there, check it out. I ask you ask questions only in the end or when I, I pause and ask you to ask any questions because otherwise it's really um, disturbs my attention and I lose my thought <laughs> sometimes. And also if there is many questions, there, there are many questions, they, they move 
up very fast and then I can miss some of the questions. So keep them, keep them till I ask for them. Um, if you have any sound or uh, vi uh, video problems, please make sure, um, let me know in the chat, put it away. And if, if it's only with you, it's probably on your side and then the best way to treat it, it's just reload your, 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 your page. Uh, if everybody says that it's something wrong with the with the sound or, or video, it means on my side and I will reload. If you stay till the end, you get the bonus that only participants that participated live in the webinar will get. So, Wendy, go, go, Wendy, Dmitri, yeah. Okay, so as a professional, um, when I walk, I, I, I look into people. I don't judge, judge them at all. But like a doctor, when he looks in your eyes and see that your um, eyeballs are yellow, he will definitely think in him, is his head that something wrong with you and you might have some hepatitis or something. Um, sorry about, about noise. It's my dogs. Somebody coming to our door. So... Um, I also automatically, with my professional school uh, skills, look into people and I see things. So what I, what really bold that I see that women often don't understand, don't understand their bodies at all, don't understand their proportions, don't understand what clothes do to their body. Sometimes, and I know it from my friends that not even my, all my friends now they all are, but before, not. All of them had even full size mirror that they can see themselves fully from toe to from toes to, to to head, right? Like in the bathroom, you have small window, you see your face, right? Like small mirror mirror. Then in your dressing room, you have something that you see yourself till the waistline, and and so on and so on. You not even look at yourself as a whole, right? what impression your body creates, what silhouette it has. You're like, like always focused on, 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 on your parts, usually on the parts that you consider your flaws, right? Like we all obsessed with what is wrong with our bodies. Nobody really focus on what is good on you, right? And that's another thing that I see a lot. Like immediately we're going to our heavy legs, big nose or whatever, whatever bothers you in your body. And then what we do next, we try and camouflage all this, right? We're trying to hide all this. But we are so obsessed with hiding that we hide too much. We hide also blessing because we're all trying to too much hide. And here there is an example with your makeup. More you're trying to hide something and put, for example, additional layer of foundation, more you will see it. More it, will, more it will attract attention of other people exactly to this pimple that you tried so hard to hide. And that's what happening also with your body. More hiding creates more retention exactly in the places that you tried so hard to hide. Okay? So that's really the, the meat of, of all the seminar today that we will be talking about flows and blessings. And hiding and not hiding. Another quote from Giorgio Armani that kind of says the same that I said in the beginning that Giorgio Armani believes that clothes can give people a better image of themselves, that it can increase their feelings of confidence and happiness. It's proved. It's really proved. It's maybe hard to believe and maybe you feel kind of resistance to this because you're saying it's too material. They're just trying to make us buy more or something like this. Yes, they are trying to, to buy, to make you buy more. But on the other hand, just remember yourself at the moment where you believe that you look good. Was it wonderful feeling? Did you have wings? You did. Trust me, you did. So it's just part of, of our woman nature. It's part of our mentality. It's, it's what makes us feel good when we feel 
beautiful, attractive, and well-dressed. Okay, now theory. Okay, stay with me. I will check, check you out there that you are still okay. So, first of all, very important to talk. When we talk about body proportions, I distinguish between two groups of proportions, horizontal and vertical. So, horizontal proportions, it's actually defined they define your silhouette or contour of your body. And they usually um, um, based on the your shoulders, width, width of your shoulders, your waist and your hips. And I'm not talking about volume. I'm not talking about full measurement, like circle measurement. I'm talking only about this. It means from one shoulder to another shoulder, from point of your waist to another point of your waist, flat, okay? That's what defines your silhouette or contour of your body. It can be very feminine and curvy. It can be straight. And that's exactly those uh, body shape that everybody talking about, but it's in the next slides. Now, next group of proportions, it's vertical proportion. And vertical proportion defines the length of your torso compared to length to, uh, to length of your legs okay and as a result define what kind of tops what lengths of tops and bottoms you need to use to keep this proportion intact so this is also very very important proportions that usually overlooked and we will talk about this okay next what else we need to consider? In addition to vertical and horizontal proportions, we need to consider also your height. Are you tall? Are you petite? Are you medium? Specific body parts, okay? Because silhouette is not enough. Do you have big bra size? Do you have long neck or very short neck? Do you have straight shoulders or rounded or sloppy shoulders, right? What about your legs? Are they heavy? Are they athletic? And all other things that together create you. And then last but not least, it's your size. Because again, any contour can be in plus and in regular or small or extra small. So size is also differentiates us among ourselves okay let's talk about body type how we determine our body type we're taking a picture and it's very important and i will explain in a minute why we need a picture why we can't just look into mirror so i usually tell my clients ask somebody to take a proper picture because camera needs to be on the level of your belly in order not to um, affect your proportions because if you're taking picture when when it's from the from the upper level your proportions your legs will be shorter than they are same happens when you took it too too low right so it needs to be in the middle of your body looking into your belly button you're taking picture of your front and of your side exactly as we are uh, were looking here okay it's better if you will be dressed in some very um, um, tight clothes, or probably better dark and against empty wall. Then it will, your contours will be very, very pronounced and you will see better. Okay? So why we need to take a picture and not look into mirror? This is something interesting that our brain does. Our brain calculates and, and analyzes a lot of information every single minute. So he um, or it likes the shortcuts, right? When um, our brain knows and recognizes some pattern, it will put the answer of this pattern immediately without continue analyzing information that, that it has. So in, our, in this case, our brain knows you very well. He knows that it's in the mirror, it's rather there, right? So we have kind of image of ourselves inside, right? So we're not actually seeing what we see in the mirror. 
our brain by the pattern recognizing that it's the same radar I know will will kind of fake the information that you see so you're not really seeing yourself when you take picture your brain thinks that it's other person when you look into picture you see yourself as the other person and that's why probably it happens to you too because it's for me it happens all the time when you see picture of yourself sometimes you think wow it's me it could be me i'm not like that right sometimes it's for better sometimes sometimes it's for worse but you not always recognize yourself here or you thought you think you know you and picture says something totally different so that's why it's because of brain tricks so we took a picture and now we're looking into this picture we can print it or we can look at the, on this picture on the screen it's okay and we compare visually our shoulders with our waist and our hips okay what is wider what is the same what is narrow now if you can't visually see the difference it means it's okay if you think that you see the difference but you're not sure you can measure it okay you can take the the um, whatever measures the the distance and measure it on on the screen or on the print to make sure but usually if your eyes doesn't see it it doesn't matter even if there is few inches difference okay and few inches difference doesn't make any difference so you okay with that okay so you're looking on your front picture and comparing waist uh, shoulders waist and hips and you're looking on your side picture and looking into lengths of your legs and torso and if I go next slide, we will see that's how you analyze your vertical proportions. If you can see girl in the middle on the, on the picture has two upper parts equal to the two lower parts. When the critical line is line where your legs start. So critical line goes when, when, where we have your, your legs um split okay so if the upper part of the body is equal to the lower part of the body you perfectly balanced it means your your legs are not short your legs are okay and if after this exercise you will come to the conclusion finally that your legs are proper lengths congratulations at least one flow down okay so that's goal in the middle now let's uh, look into the girl that is on the on our left side she is short legged because the bottom part is shorter than the upper part she has long torso that's how it's called and short legs and also look on her waistline it kind of also very long right so for this nothing wrong not the end of the world we just know know about this right now and then we just need to apply a few tricks with clothes that will totally totally hide all this you will never nobody will know that that you have short legs we have solution for everything so no no crying here and girl from the right has short torso and long legs so usually that's that's okay everybody will happy to have longer legs but you still can have some challenges if you if you have clothes that create wrong proportions it still can look weird on you if you not keeping this in mind okay are we all clear with the vertical proportions any questions here let me know if not just give me plus Wendy is okay cool then we're moving on now we're talking about horizontal proportions and here we will spend some time because here we are with all our body types of apples and triangles and hourglasses and everything else and before we go there I want to say something about this and you will hear it a lot from me so this classification is good and not good so let's start with not good 
Not good because this classification doesn't consider any other parameters. If we're using this classification straightforward, applying all the advices, I see few challenges there. The first challenge is it doesn't matter your size or your height or something, two circle goals have same advices and it's wrong because one goal is 5.9 um, feet tall and another one is petite 5.2. They will not look the same and not all advices are applicable for, those, for both of them. So that's my problem with this classification, number one. Second problem is that who told you, and we talked about this in the, in the, in the next slides, who told that I need like fix my wide shoulders? Maybe I like them or my hips are totally fine with me. And I will give you example of celebrities that and embrace their, their shapes and they're not going to, to, to fix anything that usually all advices for those body types will, will um, suggest you to fix. So that's also something that I don't like here. You need to fix only something that you have problem and you want to fix, not something that everybody consider that needs to be fixed. Okay, why I'm still talking about you, about all these uh, body shapes? Because it's everywhere. It's in the internet. Everybody talking about this, all these apples, and it's very confusing. So let's end the confusion. Let's define our silhouette. And it will help you keep in mind what contour or silhouette your body has. And then you can choose from the plenty of advices, only those that apply to the, to the issues that you want to resolve. Okay. So that's why we will still, will be talking about them. Let's go. We will start with body type hourglass. And the main characteristic of these body types, it's that your shoulders and hips are very balanced. They within the same width. You have very well defined waist. It means the difference between your waist and your hips are very, very pronounced. It creates very, very feminine curves. So it's very curvy figure. Even if you extra small, the curve, curve will still there. Usually we have quite full boost, maybe not huge, but, but, but good. Um, and this hourglass in this classification, it's considered the best body type ever. I would challenge this. There is a lot of challenges with this. Somebody doesn't want to be curvy at all. Like who said, right? Let's see a few examples of hourglasses. Here we go. We see, um, we see Scarlett Johansson. We see Sophie Loren and Marlene Monroe. All them are hourglasses. Look at Sophie Loren. That's the middle. Gorgeous body. Whoever likes it, right? Maybe somebody else say, oh, two, no, no. I don't like it, right? So it's up to you. If you like it, perfect. If you like it and you're not hourglass, there is a lot of tricks to make you look like hourglass. So whatever you want, girls, okay? Next body type. Next body type is rectangle. And it's also very balanced, considered very balanced figure because your shoulders and your hips are still the same width, but you don't have waist or your waistline is not pronounced. There is no big difference between your waist and your hips. No feminine curves. Okay. That's, that's the very man kind of oriented body type. It can be slim, very slim. Most of the models are rectangles, very tall rectangles, long rectangles, but it can be also plus size. And then you look more, more kind of square. Okay. Bulky, but not, not puffy, strong bulky, very stable bulky. Okay. Um, I'm rectangle all my life. Don't see any issue with this. Enjoy because the good thing for rectangles that you go to the, to the clo uh, to the store, almost everything fills you well. 
because most of the designers, most of the production for clothes are done for rectangle figure. It's also very, very common figure. If we're going to, to see the examples, look how many celebrities we have in rectangle body shape. We have Kate, we have Nicole, we have Gwyneth, we have Kate, Kate Hudson, we have Cameron, we have Jessica Bell. All of them are rectangles. Not all of them look like rectangles on this picture. And that's exactly illustrations of my previous comments about with clothes you can play. You can look different from what you actually have. Uh, let's took a um, um, little bit uh, more attention on Kate. Uh, first, first from the left, Kate Cambridge, Cam Princess of C Cambridge, right? I don't like when they call her um, Middleton because she is not Middleton anymore. But I actually forgot <laughs> what is the proper proper title for Kate. Her stylist did a great job because here she doesn't look as rectangle at all. With this V, with all the drapes, with the belt that actually puts accent on her waistline and with all this falling skirt she doesn't look as, re as rectangle at all okay she looks very nicely nicely done hourglass or um, for example um, not Gwyneth but Cameron Diaz the 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 lady in in pink with all these drapes and diagonal lines and all this puffiness around her hips that's exactly also what her stylist wanted to do. They make you look as having some curves, even though she is totally, totally straight. Okay, so there is a hope for all rectangles. If you want to be hourglasses, easy peasy. Okay, any questions till now? Good, let's go. Now we're talking about inventor triangle. This figure usually looks very athletic. Again, any of these body sizes can be in any size, right? But what uh, are characteristic of this body type is that you have relatively narrow and compact hips and wide shoulders. So that's why this figure creates very athletic feeling because your shoulders are much wider than your hips. You usually don't have too much waist. waist. Hips and waist also, also kind of... Um, there is no curves. It's just wide shoulders. Okay. Again, any size. It can be big girl with wide shoulders. Okay. Examples. Demi Moore, Renée Zellweger, and Cindy Crawford. Beautiful ladies. Only one of them here tried to hide and make her shoulders look more narrow. Somebody wants to guess who is that? Who is trying to hide her shoulders out of three? No, not Cindy. No, actually Demi. Okay. With wearing this interesting sleeveless dress, she tries to pull shoulders together because contrast of the dress brings, makes shoulders look, um, look, uh, narrow. Rene and Cindy here all wearing, uh, Rene is um, strapless and um, Cindy almost strapless because those very thin stripes also create the same effect. Shoulders look even wider. Look at Rene, like her shoulders twice wider than her uh, hips. She's not trying to hide it. She's proud of these shoulders, right? So who said that if you inverted inverted triangle you need to hide your shoulders or balance or add more volume to hips that's all advices that you will find in internet and it's up to you if you don't like it yes you can apply them but if you like and proud why not go ahead girl especially now when athletics and very fit body not thin but fit muscle ni nice muscle body become more and more popular. That's the shift within the trending. It's not, you don't have to be so thin and, and, and crazy slim anymore. It's more about healthy, athletic looking body. That's the shift that's going on. That's the trend. Okay. So go ahead, show them up. 
Now, one more body type triangle, or in another classification, you will find it um, very common a name for it. This body type is peer, right? And that's because the shape reminds peer. You have very compact, com compact top and relatively wide hips. Your hips always wider than your shoulders. You have very pronounced waistline. Also because hips are wider, you have this contract between waist and hips. So it's also curvy, but it's curvy only in the bottom. Any size, very slim girl can be still peer by her um, construction because all this is something that within your your bones with, within how you construct it and usually it doesn't change even you if you change your weight it your body shape will not change your silhouette will remain more or less same okay uh, so as i said any sizes examples of this body shape gorgeous gorgeous examples okay we have rihanna uh, we have Jennifer Lopez, uh, we have Beyonce, and they're all proud of their hips. They don't try to tie them at all. Jennifer Lopez actually insured her butt for a few million bucks in the past because that's she considers her very, very important asset, right? She is famous for this. She is not trying to hide it. I'm missing here another American celebrity that's very proud of her body, of her wide, heavy, actually, I would say even heavy hips, and she's never hiding them, always highlighting them. Who is that? Wendy, any, any guess? Who needs to be here? Hmm. Her first name starts with K and her last name also starts with K. Yeah, yes, go, go, Wendy. Exactly. It's Kim Kardashian. That's, that's one hip there, right? And she never hides them. She never uses all these tricks that you will find in advices for the for the um, triangle body type. She's a proud girl, and she's not small at all. She's she's plus size definitely. Okay, so saying this again and again till it kind of hits you. It's up to you to choose what you like and what you dislike in your body. Okay, and it's up to you to, to choose what you want to do with it. Last circle, the most complicated one. Usually, or in, in other classification, it will be apple. Okay, and characteristic of this that your middle part is wider than your hips. Okay, so you kind of have this shape when the middle part is the widest. So usually it because of pronounced belly okay and it's not kind of belly that you can or even slim girl can have that goes forward and it means you don't see it it doesn't interrupt with your silhouette you still have whatever you have it doesn't go outside your contour but in this um, particular uh, body type it's distributed in the way that it is affecting your contour and the middle part is wider than everything else. Usually girls uh, with this body type are lost. They think that nothing will help them. They think that this is just a horrible thing. Okay? And I'm saying, mm -mm, don't think so. It's very feminine, very sexy. There is a lot of men that like this, this type of body and woman. In the past, this was considered very, very feminine and very only rich girls can have a belly because they eat well, everything else. So it was considered very beautiful. If you go to the art museums, you will see a lot of apples there everywhere. So hopefully it will come back. But anyway, don't cry. 
we have solutions. We have solutions for you and any woman, regardless of her shape, can look beautiful. Let's see examples. Just to prove my point, here we go. Pictures a little bit small. So we have Adele, we have Melissa McCarthy, we have Queen Latifah, and we have Judy Bench. And all of them are apples. And as you can see, not all of them look like apples. And that's again thanks to their stylist and the clothes they choose. So let's have a closer look on, on Adele. What happened here is that Adele is wearing dress that is very, very tight and hard on the top. So it's kind of corset that keeps your body very, very tight together. And actually it's like very, very strong um, shape wear, right? So flats her belly because it's just pushed, pushed in, into her, okay? And also pulls her breasts up that creates also more pronounced waist. And then from the waist, there is a very puffy skirt that creates the, the difference, contrast between the waistline and the hips. And here we go. There is no apple. There is hourglass in plus size. Just because. Melissa doesn't want to hide anything. I adore her. She is amazing, amazing, especially for, for her size. She doesn't give shit anybody. And she proud of as she is. I like her speeches for the woman magazine when they spoke speak with her about dieting or, or being plus size. She has her own um, plus size line of clothing that is relatively affordable. It's around 100 bucks here and there. On sale, it's always uh, cheaper. Very nice clothes. And for those of you that are plus size, I really encourage you to follow her and look on her outfits. She has very good stylist. She is not shame of what she has. And, and you know what? Because of personality, because of energy, because of her confidence, Nobody cares. Nobody really sees any horrible things that, that, that she has because she doesn't have any horrible things. It's just all in your head. So here she is not trying to hide her appleness. She is wearing wrap dress and wrap dresses your best friends for this body type. But about this, we will talk on the other, other occasion. Queen Latifah tried to do hourglass little bit, little bit by all these diagonal lines that and the the mermaid uh, feet of the dress she tried to create some curves on herself when uh, judy chose to be rectangle so all this uh, very straight sharp um, shoulders and falling um, uh, fabric from the shoulders created just a uh, rectangle shape here, right? You see it. And then she also have a draping on her belly, that diminished belly, and then she looks like, like a rectangle, okay? Any questions here? Okay. Nope. Good. Then we continue. And you thought you will go away from without homework. Right? No. There is a homework. Homework for yourself. <clears throat> what I want you to do is determine your body shape using photo as I described. And then looking on these photos, I want you to do some analysis and thoughts. Okay? We try and go away from some subjective beliefs that you have in your head to something very objective information that we can then use. Okay? So I want to put a list of what you have, okay? I want you to put three uh, flows that you think are the biggest flows of your, of your figure, but I want you to put five blessings objectively looking on your picture. And no excuses. You need to find all five. It can be big eyes. It can be nice skin. It can be anything related to how do you look. 
whatever it is, very nice and, and thin wrists, very nice ankles, uh, small feet, great, I even can't imagine <laughs> what, what, el what another example to give you, but you get the, get the idea. Five, I need five blessings. Then please try to analyze what you thought you have and what objectively you actually have. What I mean by this as example that all your life you thought that your legs are short. And then after you analyze your vertical proportions, you actually discover that they are totally fine. Okay? So I want to, you to find these conflicts with your previous belief and objective information that you actually have. Then list what you don't have and choose from this what actually from what you don't have what you don't need for example you don't have big boobs but you don't need them you never wanted them right so this will be something like this it will help you to sort out those things that we don't care about okay by the end what i want you to have is very clear understanding how you would like to look okay what actually you don't like and we will will work to camouflage this and conceal and what actually something that you will be proud of and we will be reve revealing this and we will be putting accents on this that people don't see your flaws anymore they just go straight to your assets and then you feel confident and beautiful okay so by the end of this exercise, you're supposed to be very clear how you would like to look, how you would like have your body. Let me check that I didn't forget anything. I didn't. Are we clear here? Cool. Okay little bit switching the subject and talking about components of successful outfit successful in your eyes that you think it's cool and successful in the eyes of your audience because usually you wear clothes when you go to other people to see you right so first of all your clothes needs to fit your body and i put it very first and that's actually main reason why i start my educational program talking about body because any Armani suit or Dolce Gabbana dress, if it doesn't fit you, it doesn't matter that it's Dolce Gabbana. It doesn't matter anything else. Like you don't feel well, don't look good. So did, do nothing, right? So this is very first component. And that's why we're talking about bodies. Then... The next component is that your outfit actually fits the occasion and place. And those two, occasion and place, are actually different. Because place may be the same restaurant, but occasion can be business lunch and romantic dinner. And for those two occasions in the same place, you will choose different outfits. So your outfit needs, you need always, when, when you dress, you need always think where you're going. Who will be your audience, right? and choose out, out your outfit wisely that it actually fits the, the audience, place and occasion. Because wedding on the grass in the country club will be different from the wedding in church, right? Just a few examples. Next component is appropriate. The outfit is appropriate for your age and social rules. Age, with age, I have very simple approach. Age is not a limit for anything, it's just a number. But when I say that you need to consider your age when you dress, I'm more uh, talking about uh, body changes that we experience with the age. For example, if I have fluffy hands, the, the upper hand, you know, they become very fluffy, especially for those who doesn't like sports and weights, then you just avoid sleeveless dresses, right? But it's not because I'm 59. It's because my arms doesn't look good. So this rule will work for, for, for body limitations and not for age. With social rules, it's a little bit more complicated. 
social rules, it's your environment. It's what is acceptable in the audience where you're going or not acceptable. And you, of course, can break them, but you need to understand and do it in purpose. If you decided to break them, create attention, scandalize, go for it, girl, right? But if it's not your, um, if not your purpose, just remember that you need to follow those rules to feel comfortable, to, to feel acceptable. And those social rules will be very different in different social levels. High society is different from the cowboys, right? And also geographically from country to country. So we probably will be quite similar with Americans, depends where, but mostly. But we will be very, very different from England, United Kingdom. Oh, my God, they have so many social rules. I always think, thanks God, I'm not there. Or, for example, if I compare to Russia, something that will be totally acceptable here and I will be considered wealthy girl with high, maybe not high society, but very good income level in Russia, I will be considered poor north somewhere there because their social rules for closing very different so keep it in mind too then we're talking about uh, if your outfit is actual or very outdated and I'm not talking about super trendy stuff that you need to follow and and oh my god if you're not dressed for fashion you you lost I'm talking about real outdated things that ate a lot of age for you they can add 10 years on you if you're wearing wrong fabric. For example, velvet. Year ago, you ask me about velvet. I say, no, no way. It's so outdated. You will look like a grandma. Now it's super trendy. So this rule doesn't work anymore. But for example, corduroy is another fabric that considered very old fashioned. And yes, they still produce corduroy pants and you can buy them in every store but it doesn't mean that you need to wear them okay just a little bit be on top of these things because automatically in the brains of people that look at you they even don't realize this but that adds additional information and their brain calculates and say okay this is probably like old right so in addition to fabric shape of the clothes fit or cut can can also be very outdated for example width of labels of your jacket okay if they too wide or too narrow it can relate to specific time like 10 years ago so wide labels now also become trendy but half a year ago or a year ago they were considered super outdated so jackets that you wear for a long time it can look very new, but it can give you very outdated feel. So if you buy jackets, try to find something medium that is timeless, right? Classic, without extremes to any side. Prints, that's super story with prints because prints can be super outdated and it's very hard for an an experienced person to distinguish between what is outdated and what is okay. Florals right now super trendy, but there is a florals and there is a florals. Okay, they are they are very can be very different. So, for example, here in Canada we have Laura. This is very nice um, store, very affordable store that a lot of women like to buy there because of their fits. They actually produce for very for real women, with curves, with butts, with hips. So their clothes usually fits very well. So I shop there for my clients, but you need to be very care careful in Laura because of their prints. I would suggest you go there only for the solid colors. Don't try. If you don't have enough experience with prints, don't buy their prints. Most of them are very outdated. It gives you grandma look right away. And then makeup is another one that can make your face look very outdated. If you didn't change your makeup for, for years, go to YouTube, um, look for some new tutorials. Um, when you in your hairdresser, uh, with your hairdresser, look for magazines, 
see how right now makeup applications are because it's also aid adds a lot of age to you and looks very outdated accessories make a big difference make the same dress look totally different in any occasion so i'm a big fan of accessories and it's must and then the last one but very important one if you want your outfit to be successful it needs to be very close to your comfort zone or within or very close to your comfort zone and i will explain why i am as a stylist and if you know me my personal style it's a little bit crazy i can make you look gorgeous pretty trendy cool but if it's something that doesn't resonate with you you will be very unhappy wearing this okay despite of all compliments that you will receive despite my explanation why it's so good for you despite anything you will not feel comfortable it means outfit is not successful for you you will be not happy so when you need look your best when you need feel the confidence don't try super extreme things that you never tried it's not good time for this and as a stylist i am not saying always stay in your comfort zone no 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 then it's style stagnation you always need to go a little bit but when you really need good outfit don't jump don't do big leaps okay any questions here it was long topic a lot of information let me know if we okay with that cool so what i want to mention that my work as a stylist is actually around all this okay make sure that your feet is good make sure that your clothes is appropriate for your goals and what you want to use them for your lifestyle make sure that it's all not outdated it's classic or modern or 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 actual or trendy depends again how far you want to go with this so and also make like move slowly from your very very own comfort zone where you are right now slowly slowly move forward but not jump somebody sometimes my clients request a big change and they're ready for extreme makeover but i can tell you from my experience if you never did this in your life and you're not really like me changing yourself all the time it's it's not good not sustainable thing to do it will give you emotions but it's not sustaining your lifestyle so smaller steps are better and that's my work actually as a stylist with you why we need to do this why we need to know this why we just can't live without this so first thing that i wanted to say that if you know and understand you can adjust and do better if you don't know you have no ways to do anything with this so for my opinion knowledge is always better if i can know something i prefer to know if you know you can change once you understand what you want to do what really bothers you in your body you can change it i have tools and i will show you few slides even today i have tools to make you slimmer i have tools to make your legs look much longer than they are i can increase or decrease your your bra size in seconds with clothes same with hips you want narrower hips no problem let's do this you want be more curvy let's do this so there is a lot of tools uh with clothes that we can change what else i want to do is to make you stop shop chaotically and spend your money on clothes that doesn't fit you well that doesn't make you beautiful and just then hang in your closet or make you unhappy when you look at it yourself and this is possible only with knowledge once you look good we already talked you have you much more confidence you have your self esteem you have wings 
And last, stop hate yourself. Stop hate your body. Embrace what you have. Start see your blessings. And I will show you. I, you, I, I will show you them for you. I will show you your blessings. Every woman has blessings. Period. <laughs> I said that. We have a lot of our body parameters that given I by birth and we can't change them. Some of them we can change by plastic surgery, but some of them we can't change. We can make our legs longer than they are. With clothes, with right shoes, with other tricks, we can. Clothes actually a miracle tool that you need to know how to use. If you know how to use colors, shapes, accent you will look as you wish so i have three steps formula for your best body understand that's what we're doing today what we have that's the purpose of this webinar know what you want that's your homework and then know how to get it it means gain the knowledge and then apply the change and actually change. Apply your understanding, your wishes and your knowledge all together and have body of your dreams. And as a first step, we're doing today two steps. We're doing our homework. And the second step that I really encourage you to do is to buy big full size mirror. It can be something small and very cheap that you can give in Home Depot. It can be something fancy from winners, but go there and get it. Start seeing yourself as a whole. Look how, what impressions you create, what, what clothes do to you when you dress them. This pair of jeans that are very distressed, what they do to your hips and, and, and your legs. That, do they make them wider than you, without them? What this t-shirt, if it's too tight, if it shows any, any, any imperfections, start looking at yourself, not looking only for flaws, but putting focus of what clothes does to you. It's not you, it's the wrong clothes. Okay. Another thing that I want you to do is to do some small exercise. Try um, stand against the mirror full full size mirror close your eyes for a minute and then open them and then try to catch this first impression from what you see in the mirror before your brain goes directly to your flaws and you see again your your nose or your heavy legs what impression did it create it you will find yourself very beautiful yes yes i promise very very beautiful Okay, so that's my another um, kind of challenge to you. What next? What we're doing next? Next, I invite you to my online course about body. I name it how to look your best ever because I truly believe that this course will give you all the tools to look your best. You will understand your body best features and flows. You look on yourself in holistic and objective ways and not part by part. You will know how to dress your body to look your best, whatever you want to hide, whatever you want to reveal without diets and exercises. You will learn a lot of professional secrets that I, I actually learned during my studies in stylist schools that are and secrets that professional stylists uses in their work. What you will get is clear and simple examples and instructions what to wear to look great. You will save time shopping because then you will very fast sort out the things that you even don't need to try because they not for you. They for somebody else, okay? They will not make you pretty. You will get self-confidence, and we already talked about this a lot. Less stress, 
because when you shop right now there is a huge sea of clothes everywhere and you really feel frustrated from the amount that you have and you don't want to know what to choose you're trying and trying this and trying that and nothing looks good on you a lot of stress a lot of frustration we will eliminate this after you this course you will change the way you look at yourself that's my promise here is example of some slides from my course that that we're talking about um it's the same lady in very similar clothes where i show you what was slight changes that were made on on her outfit and what the difference you see and within the web webinar where we will look into this picture in very detail and have a lot of this it's mostly examples before and after and for every example we will go there and say okay you see changing this from this to this that's what makes it look different here you see pants without without um, folds then it looks slimmer the length changed and that's what make legs look longer and slimmer again all these small details that you probably don't understand till I explain you what happened there, right? So it's hands-on experience that you can apply uh, on yourself next day. A lot of material. It's all will be also recorded. So you always can look into this again and again and kind of refresh things. Here is a picture of myself just showing that within this, these pictures were taken five minutes uh, apart and as you can see, I am much slimmer on the right picture than on the left picture. I just used a few tricks here to look slimmer. And I do look slimmer. I hope you can see it. Again, we will talk about all these tricks in our body course. So this course starts on March 21st. At same time as today, 7.30 p.m. Calgary time with the live webinar exactly the, the the same format as today webinar about all the manipulations that we can do with our bodies using clothes this is the most this is the most meaty information you can get in addition to this webinar you will have five video lessons pre-recorded video lessons that you will get on your mailbox for each body type it means you can today you determine your body type and then you will have lesson for your body type explaining what suggestions to fit your your main advantages what things if you want to camouflage the 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 common flows of this body type what you need to do in this case you can watch all five lessons you you will receive all of them it's up to you you want to see only yours you want to see yours and your mama you can you can watch as many lessons as you can also it's sometimes it's very useful because for example if you have wide shoulders but you're not really tri um, inverted triangle you can still go there and see the methods how you can bring your shoulders a little bit make them um, more narrow so it's up to you what you want to watch it's your free time uh, lessons will be relatively short uh, webinar will be long hour and a half at least because i have a lot of information to share uh, lessons about body type types are relatively short about 20 30 minutes then we have facebook support group for a month i will be there to support you answer all your questions you can put their pictures you can put their questions any concerns i will be there for you because by the end of this course i want you to be clear of any questions about your body image that's my goal okay so we will have closed facebook support group where we can exchange information i will put there additional materials that we can't um, um, do in the webinar uh, so a lot of good stuff and in addition you will have pdfs for each body type with the examples of the outfits trendy but totally wearable 
outfits that you can use right away. Any questions about content of the webinar, if you have? Cost. Next page. Thank you for your question, Wendy. So we ha you have two options for this, for this course. The basic option includes everything that I described. And today's price is 74 USD dollars. And this price is available for 12 hours from now. It's 33% discount. After 12 hours, it will go to 177 of Canadian dollars. Okay, that's full price for, the, for this package. Another package is a little bit more expensive and it includes my one-to-one -one consultation. Okay, so that's your opportunity if you feel, and it can be done online and can be done in person, depends where you live. Um, that's your opportunity to, to take my services in, in discounted price. In addition, between all the participants that registered and paid, there will be draw and one lucky participant will get um, my premium package that includes my consultation free. It means I will return, refund all the money you paid for your package and will upgrade you to premium package. And that will happen on March 18, online Facebook Live. You will see how I draw your numbers. So no tricks there. Everything will be very honest. Questions? 